How to find the root cause of your gut issues in 30 seconds. Years ago, I would have killed to have this kind of quiz that would tell me about certain signs and symptoms and what organ or physiological pathways they are coming from. This is something I've put together because when I was incredibly sick, I had seen doctors and had spent well over $10,000 of my money. Actually, it was all of my money and all of my savings and then debt to try to understand where symptoms were coming from. Conventional doctors had their own opinions, those even varied. Alternative doctors had their own opinions, those definitely varied. But in general, no one said, this symptom is coming from this place and this is how we can treat it and this is how we can resolve it. So in this video, I wanna share this little quiz and little symptom checklist I've put together for you purely for digestive symptoms. And we'll jump in and get nitty gritty about what you need to know. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Let's get in. The way we are going to approach this is not necessarily by the symptom itself, but by the location where you feel problems. Let's start with your upper GI. Most of the time when people come in to see me with upper GI issues, you're seeing conditions like acid reflux, indigestion, gastritis, sometimes gallbladder issues, gallbladder attacks, gall stones, little zingers people get 30 minutes after meals, mucus in the throat, sourness or bitterness in the throat. All of these to me are upper GI issues. And this is very important because we're going to target certain organs here that you won't for let's say lower GI issues. Upper GI in traditional Chinese medicine very often is a result of the stomach, spleen, pancreas, and liver and gallbladder having issues. And you guys can see right here a lot of what we're talking about when we talk about upper GI issues. Issues like discomfort or stuffiness in the chest and the ribs, headaches, migraines, chronic acid reflux, of course, chronic indigestion. Another sign and symptom people often have, believe it or not, when they have upper GI issues is chronic sinusitis, sinus infections, stuffy noses, chronic lingering sinus issues. And the reason for that is the disruption of the gut mucosa and the chronic inflammation that is often the result of the poor diet over a long period of time. So you're just seeing downstream and upstream effects, so to speak. We're also seeing things like belching, chronic burping and a poor appetite, nausea, alternating stools, the emotional link between the liver, which is agitation, anger, sometimes rashes, either skin rashes or general rashes. A lot of the conditions that are related to the upper GI are the result of what we call dampness, disruption of the gut mucosa, and inflammation, heat. Chinese medicine calls this damp heat. And damp heat can show up elsewhere in the body. Athlete's foot, fungal infections, certain kinds of candida and yeast are damp heat in nature. Upper GI, we're primarily targeting gallbladder, stomach, spleen pancreas, and the liver secondarily, but usually it's fatty liver in this case. Now let's go to what I call the middle GI, middle GI here. And don't forget guys, this quiz I put together, it's totally free. It's the first link right below this. You're going to get, I mean, there's like 15 pages here we've put together to try to go through every organ network. It also links to all the videos that are relevant to that sign and symptom. So it's really comprehensive. The whole thing is free and we took a lot of time to hopefully make it useful and helpful. So download it below so you can start checking off these as we're going through this video. I'd highly recommend that. When I think about location, for the liver, gallbladder, upper GI issues, most of the time people come in, they're having issues at the highest part of the stomach. It's where they feel pain, discomfort, burning, gnawing, nausea or subcostally under the rib side so for example right underneath the rib cage on the upper left is more typically low stomach acid and not enough pancreatic enzymes discomfort on the right side under the rib cage pressure distension or actual pain sometimes it's just zingers after a meal sometimes it's gallbladder attacks that's more of a gallbladder issue typically as we move towards spleen stomach and pancreas issues most of the time when patients come in they're gesturing more around the belly button just above the belly button, like the area where you would feel indigestion. Sometimes this overlaps, and sometimes it is the left upper quadrant, the fundus, the highest part of the stomach there, because gastritis is often what we would lump into this category. And gastritis, people will often gesture toward the higher part of the stomach, or the kind of the left upper quadrant area there. In terms of what we call spleen stomach pancreas, this is typically issues with food allergies, low appetite, chronic indigestion, but less acid reflux, lots of bloating, food baby, lots of gas production and food sensitivities. That would be the absolute, you know, main symptom cluster that I tend to see here. And the location again, more dead center of your stomach to around the belly button or below the belly button, where people often get a food baby, for example. When we talk about stereotypical signs and symptoms, abdominal bloating or a food baby, loose stools, low appetite, right? Or sometimes people say, you know, I only have good energy when I'm constantly eating. On top of that, pale complexion, unintended weight loss, fatigue, 
heaviness in the body or limbs, undigested food, edema, discharge, or chronic throat clearing. If you check off a lot of these symptoms, you probably have issues with these organs here. That's what Chinese medicine often calls spleen qi deficiency. The symptoms aren't really related to the spleen primarily. It's more of pancreas, mucous membranes, the stomach, but all of these are related to this organ network in particular. Now, when it comes to the lower GI itself, I don't have a specific page here on the large intestine, for example, because it falls into these other organ networks. And the formulas we utilize to treat these are often the ones that resolve large intestine issues, like constipation, or like, for example, alternating stool patterns, or diarrhea, for example. Chronic loose stools are, again, more what we call spleen, stomach, pancreas issues from Chinese medicine point of view. For this one, this is more small intestine, large intestine, and again, spleen, pancreas, and stomach. But these kinds of issues are, in terms of location, typically below the belly button. Gas, a lot of pressure in the abdomen, alternating stools, or very severe constipation, right? Purely dry stools or purely loose stools. All of these are often related to the microbiome, for example, as one option. Can be related to bile production, which is why when we talk about people who are very constipated with drier stools, we're treating it from a liver and gallbladder. How does that make sense from a biomedical point of view? Sometimes what it is is issue with bile production as well as SIBO, right? Bacterial overgrowth. So while there is gut dysbiosis, sometimes those herbs that actually clinically are shown to improve bile flow will often lubricate the bowel movements a little bit more as well. For this one, you often see issues like IBS, cramping, and general gut dysbiosis, so constipation is really the main one. Sometimes a lot of these are due to inflammation in the intestines, and other times they're not. Other times it's the spasmodic quality, you know, related to Crohn's disease or IBS, for example, where people will get these flare-ups for a week or two weeks or sometimes a month. They're getting abdominal cramping, pain, frequent stools, and then it goes back to normal. Or there are people who are having one bowel movement per week, and that's also really bad as well. For these, you often see overlapping symptoms here. For example, very commonly with IBS and people who get abdominal cramping, you will see upper GI issues. That's one of the key signs that there's a very poor diet involved, is because you are seeing the upper GI showing heavy signs of inflammation, gallbladder issues, chronic sinusitis, that sort of thing as well. For these, you will see upper GI and lower GI in conjunction, especially IBS, which is strongly linked to a poor diet for some people, and also chronic constipation that's very severe, like once every three days or more, is very commonly dietarily linked, and you will see upper GI issues with the gallbladder and the stomach and acid reflux most of the time in my experience. Now, we have tons of videos here on the channel for how to treat each one of these. It would be an hour long video to go into how to treat every single one of these patterns. Go back through the other videos. We have a hundred on how to actually treat these, but if you want a shortcut, this is page number nine. If you can see that, we have each organ network and five, six, seven, ten related videos on how to treat it. Get this guide because you can just have hyperlink. This whole thing's free. It'll show you exactly what to do for each organ network. Of course, you can search the videos too, but I've tried to make this useful and relevant. Check it out. Again, don't forget guys, if you want to work with me one-to-one -one in my clinic in Los Angeles or via telemedicine, I work with a limited number of new patients every single month. So you can go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic or check out the information in the bio down there below. And then also don't forget, we shot a recent video overviewing this free guide and how to uncover the root cause of your health problems in 30 seconds. So make sure you check out that video right here as well.